video um, on how to use um, MATLAB latex equations. So um, all you do is very easy. You just make a, a live script. Um, so you can click new uh, live script. I have one open over here. So let's say you want to do some calculations. So let's say you've got um, time domain going from zero steps of 0.1 to 10 seconds, let's say. Uh, and you have your comments here, time in seconds. Uh, and then you have a function of t. Uh, let's call that um, sine uh, 2 times pi uh, dot times t. Uh, and then uh, well, you will plot uh, ty, uh, sorry, uh, ty um, line width 1. Um, and it's always a good idea. We'll do this beginning. Clear CLC, um, CLA, and CLF. That clears the figure and the axis. Um, and uh, so let's just run some some simple code. Um, and we'll do grid on. Okay, so there's, say, um, our code over here, um, but let's say we want to write something now underneath that um, and explain what we've done. So what we do, we don't do enter. All we do, we go to the last line, and on a Mac, you just do Alt, or it's the Option key, and Enter, just once. And what that does is it changes the mode to text mode. So now I can write here, hello, uh, now I can type um, the... Uh, descriptions of what figure oops, came above. Um, and then if I want to go back to um, code mode, I just hit the same thing again. So I think on the Windows it's Alt Enter, on the Mac it's Option or Enter, and now I'm in text mode again. So over here I can uh, create another figure and do say Y1 equals uh, sign uh, 2 times pi times 2 uh, times uh, t. Um, uh, and I can plot that again using the same as before. So we've got t, uh, y1. And then that should plot a figure underneath with uh, double the frequency as before. And we'll have the formatting the same as well as before. Okay, now uh, if we go into uh, this mode over here, hide mode, we can then see all the figures and all the text and it just removes all the code like that. So that gives a preview of what the printed version is going to look like. Now the question is what happens when we, when we want to enter things like equations. So let's say you want to actually type a description of the first uh, equation over here, sine 2 pi t. So all we do is that we can uh, go to that. And if we do um, shift command L, we go into latex mode. So over here we can say, um, we can use all latex no and notation to make it look really nice. So we can say here uh, the function, so we can say y equals, or we can say um, ft, function dependent on t, equals um, sine. Uh, now you don't write sign like this for trig functions. What you do well, for any for any function in LaTeX, you do a um, backslash or it's forward slash. I can't remember which one it is, but there's two types like that, and the one that we use here is this one, um, and we do sign like that. And you notice the difference uh, between if we don't use the backslash, you get like an italic kind of thing, uh, and that means um, that we've used sign over here. Uh, and then what we can do, we can do sign open bracket, and it doesn't matter how many spaces, it just ignores all the spaces because it's like a programming language kind of thing. Um, these are just white spaces. So then you do sign um, 2 pi t, 2. And for pi, again, what we're going to do, we're going to do backslash pi, and then it changes to pi, and then we're just going to type t like that. And it doesn't matter where you can do the t, you can't do the t immediately after the pi because that was a like um, that's a, an operator because you have a backslash, so 2 pi t, and you can close the bracket. 
Now, let's say that what we want to do, um, so we can include that over here. And then another thing we can do, if we do shift control three, that will set it to that, control two, control one. So we can immediately change the, uh, the size as well. Again, shift control three, shift control two, shift control one. So let's do shift control three. I like doing that because it's nice and nice and large. Um, and then again, if we go back into this mode over here, so we just go to the right, um, remove the hide code, and then we can see that, um, that that's come up over here um, at the top. And then we have our um, graph underneath. Now, um, let's, let's have a look at some other things. So let's say we want to write something else over here. Again, remember, shift command L. And that will bring up the latex um, equation editor. Um, now, let's say we want to enter a fraction. Um, so let's do, we can do 5 over 4. But in latex, we can do something a lot more clever than that. We can do a fraction operator, which is backslash frac, um, and then semicolon, semicolon, double semicolon, double semicolon. The top one, the first one will be the first, the numerator, um, and the second one will be the denominator. So we could say do 2 uh, pi over here um, on t at the bottom, so that en ends the fraction or enters the fraction like that. And there's a good reason for doing that, because when we start entering more complicated functions, we can uh, we can just enter that within that within that bracket space. Um, so uh, so let's let's again let's try doing something a little bit more complicated. So let's say we want to enter um, a function of sine um, uh, where the argument is a lot more complicated. So uh, what we can do if we uh, c control copy that. Um, and then uh, we do a shift command L um, and paste that so we can see the preview here, uh, f of t equals sine 2 pi t. But let's say uh, we want to insert um, a fraction in there. Okay, so um, what we can do, let's just save that over here like that and let's, let's just enter a fraction. So we'll do frac like that and let's do um, 4 uh, pi t. Um, and uh, let's square everything there. Uh, 4 pi t squared, okay, like that, on um, e uh, to the power of, and again, I'm going to enclose the power of with these uh, curly braces, so we can say um, 5 space backspace cosine, uh, another, and then I'm going to do um, 7 pi t, like that over here. So now we can see that we've now building up a slightly more complicated uh, fa fraction. Um, and what we can do is that the, the magic of latex, we can copy and paste that, okay? Um, and then we can put that inside the argument over here, okay? Just like this. And there we have that fraction inside the sign argument. The problem that we have now is that can you see these two curly braces, two curly brackets over here? They're they're a little bit small. So again, with LaTeX, we can be um, we can use um, a function, an operator. We can do uh, backslash left, and then over here on the last one, we can do uh, backslash right r i d h t, and Latex has automatically formatted um, the argument over here. So everything that encloses those two brackets are beautifully formatted now. Um, so you, you can use this in many, many scenarios, um, or in any scenario, um, and the bracket will automatically format to uh, whatever is inside those things. Now you can also use square brackets as well, just like this. And if we hit OK, then we can start entering things like this as well. Um, so that's just some of the things that you can do. Um, let's do a um, an integral. Um, so let's say uh, let's say um, f of t equals um, e to the power um, of minus st. Um, you know where I'm going with this. St uh, dt. And again, when you have a dt here, um, this is actually an algebraic notation, so it's a slightly in italic. Well, we don't want that because it's just a um, it's just a, a letter notation. So we could do backslash text, and we enclose the following 
in a brace, um, then we can say dt is now as in the English term as well. Um, now, if you want to do some commas or spaces, you can't do that in latex because look, it just looks like white space. Well, actually, there's a way around that. So if you do backslash comma like that, it reads that as spaces. Okay. Um, so you can see as I add those things, it gets further and further away. So you can you can format using this, which is quite quite nice. Um, anyway, let's add um, an integral here. So let's do um, uh, integral like that. Um, underscore. Um, underscore brace uh, to the power of brace. So the lower one will be, uh, let's do four and five, the lower one will be what's coming on the bottom. So let's define the semi-infinite limits between zero and infinity. Um, so for infinity, you guessed it, there should be a backslash uh, infty is infinity. So we've got zero to infinity of um, Whoops, e to the minus st should be in front of the uh, integrand over here, out there. So we've got z uh, 0 to infinity, uh, e to the minus st dt. So that's the definition of the uh, of the Laplace operator, uh, but we're missing a function of, uh, of f of x. Um, so we can just write that uh, in here like that. Okay, um, and that would be s. Uh, actually, I think that would be something like that, wouldn't it? Uh, or like that, or I know, no, no, one minute. Um, f of s, I think. So, um, so that's basically what we can do. And let's click enter, and we can, um, and then we can write whatever we want over here uh, as an explanation, uh, explaining over here. Uh, but usually what you would do is that you would just write underneath um, whatever you want to do over here. So that's how you can end up with very beautiful and very, uh, very nice, clean um, explanations. So, um, you know, you might have a paragraph over here, um, uh, paragraph of um, explanation. Uh, I can't spell because I've been up all night. <laughs> paragraph, paragraph and explanation of above function uh, description. Da, 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 da. Um, and then and then you can just carry on um, and do that. Uh, another important thing to note as well is that you want to break up in very very long pieces of code. You will want to break your code up. So let's say I want to run this code separately to what comes before. So if you do on a Mac, it's going to be option command enter. Um, I think that will be alt uh, command enter, something like that on a Windows. Then you break up your code into different sections and you can run different parts independently. So you just do um, shift enter and I just run this. And then if I want to run this piece of code, I do shift enter and then it will run this and generate that graph. So for instance, if I want to change um, this, uh, to say 0 .0 point, uh, 0 0.1, but I do not want to adjust this over here. Now let's let's just change both of them. So I'm changing that one to a hundred uh, scale, and I'm changing this to a much lower frequency. If I just run this section, watch. You see, it doesn't change that at all. It only changes this one. If I run this code over here, it's going to change this one. See? So that's really really useful. So um, the the main points to take away are Alt Enter to go between uh, text mode and uh, code mode. Alt enter, alt enter, alt enter, alternates and um, command, uh, option command enter to break the code, um, just like that. So I hope that was helpful.